the prayers of our sisters here tonight, dear Lord. Be with us, Lord. Keep your arms all around us. In the name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for the weather. We just say thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're back. We're back. Those of you that are joining us on YouTube, Unity, NBC, Sacramento, California, uh, hit the subscribe button. We encourage others to look at us and hit that subscribe button and let us know how you're feeling about the ministry and the, and the Word of God because we're only going to come at you from the Word of the true and the living God. As the Bible says, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Oh, I'm just excited preaching to you from the Word of God. We are still in the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Romans, the eighth chapter, Romans, pro Romanos, the epistle of Paul to Rome. Oh, what a word from the Lord. In the eighth chapter is where we've been. This evening we're going to go from verse 34. He who condemns, it is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who makes also makes intercessions for us. The subject we want to use is Christ is at the right hand of God who makes intercessions for us. Some of you, if you've heard me preach before, uh, in my closing, I always give credence to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about he rose from the dead and he uh, was bodily resurrected. He ascended. And then I said, I say, he, then he's at the right hand of the Father for us right now, making intercession for us. And many of you don't know where that comes from, but it comes from here in the Bible, here nestled in this rich, rich uh, verse text of Romans, the eighth chapter. And what a chapter that it is. This same Romans the 8th that starts at 8-2. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What a word, what a word from God. We pick up in verse 23, still in the 8th chapter. Not only that, but also, we also, who are the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body. Because one day, brothers and sisters, you got to leave this earth. You got to leave here. You gotta, you're not going to stay here forever. None of us are going to stay here forever. This point to a man wants to die. After that, the Bible says, is the judgment. Oh, hallelujah. But we're waiting for that time. Hallelujah. Verse 20. For, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is in seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what, what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Amen. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For we do not know that we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself, listen to this, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. As we go into our text tonight, it is important that we understand this is all dealing with the supernaturalness of God Almighty, his son Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Ghost. It is deep, it is profound, and it is supernatural. I'm going to say that one more time. It's deep, it is profound, and it is supernatural. And no other religious group, 
No other so-called religious entity, no one else can make the claims that Paul makes in Romans 8. I know some say, well, Islam, no, Islam can't make this. Some say, well, Johnism, no, Johnism can't make this. Well, Buddhism, no, Buddhism can't. No one else can make these claims here concerning the supernaturalness of God Almighty. Let's look at verse 27. Now, now he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Listen to this again. He makes intercessions for the saints. That's you and I, those of us that are saved, according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these, and he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What is verse 30 saying? He predestined us. Those that are called, and those that are called, he's justified, and they're glorified. Why and who? Because of who and what we are in Christ. Not because of anything that we do. Not because of what we say, but because who we are in Christ. Now, here's the thing. This is why I have problems with a lot of people in the modern church. A lot of people in the church make everything about them. Lord, you're not blessing me enough. Lord, you need to send me here. Lord, I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. When we don't, we don't spend enough time dealing with the, how I said it earlier, the deep, the profound, and the supernaturalness of who God Almighty is. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. It's not about you. It's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to become more Christ-centered because it's not about us. It's about Christ. Let me say that one more time. It's about he who died on this cross, came off of this cross, and was bodily resurrected, uh, and is now on the right hand of the Father. It's about him. It's not about us. Beloved, I hear a lot of Christians, oh Lord, if, if, if you bless me, I'll get that Lexus I want. Lord, if you bless me, I'll get this wife that, that is super fine. I, you bless me, I'll get a, hands, a husband that's super handsome. I'll get a husband that's rich. It's all about us, 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 and less about Christ. We have to be in our lives more Christ-centered. Uh, where we, we were too, here's a big word I learned in English 1A when I was in junior college many years ago. We are too idiosyncratic. It's about us. It's about me. It's about everything I want. It's about me getting to this level or that. It's how about knowing that if you don't make it tonight, if you die tonight, you're going to be at home with the Lord. How about that? It's not about your idiosyncrasy. It's about the fact that Jesus died for us, rose again, bodily resurrected for us again, and now is ascended and ascension, and now he's at the right hand of the Father. The fact that he says that is grand. The fact that he says that is wonderful. It's deep, it is profound, and it is supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's, again, he who is predestined, talking about us, he who also is called, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Ooh, there's a day I'm going to be in my resurrected, glorified body to be at home with the Lord. That day is coming. If you're sitting around thinking about how you're going to make a million dollars next year, how you're going to go to that ball when it was carnival on one of those 10-story ships and live and have a great time, it's not about you. It's about your life in Jesus Christ. A friend of mine, we're talking about this today, and he says, well, there are seven or eight points. I says, oh, no, I've been on this since January. There's a lot of points when we deal with the book of Romans, the eighth chapter tonight. Reread this again. I haven't even got to the end of it. We just got to verse 34. Let's read our text again. Whom 
is he who condemns. It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercessions for us. The Holman version says this, who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more, he has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Um, I had a bad accident in 1987 and I have to believe that the Lord made intercessions for me because I probably, I probably should have been killed in that accident. It was a horrible accident. I had a smug utility pole going 75 miles an hour. And the truck that I was in was so damaged that it looked like somebody took a can opener and just opened the top of where if a passenger had been there, they more than likely would have been dead. But here it is, my brothers and sisters. I have to believe that the Lord saw that and made intercessions for poor old little old me. Maybe, maybe, maybe he knew he had me. I was going to be preaching in a couple of more years. He knew I still had something else to do on this earth. Thank God for the Lord that makes intercession for us. That's a thankful, that's something to be thankful all by itself. That's something to be thankful for all by itself. Hallelujah. The ISV version, Romans 8, 34. Who is the one to condemn? It is the Messiah, Jesus, who is interceding on our behalf. He died and more importantly has been raised and has seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Who is he who condemns? Got a Carino, judge, to give an opinion, to determine, to pronounce judgment. That's what that means when it says to condemn. But thank God he intercedes for us, intercedes, inter continuum into to Kachano, into Kachano. That means to fall in, to fall in, to fall in with. That means to get close to. That means to get deep and pronounced with. That means to get to the point where you get so deep and so wrapped up into a situation that that, that it then comes. You become hallelujah. You become an intercession. You intercede. You come and it goes deep that goes deeper than what our minds can go deal with sometimes. That's what makes this text so grand and so important. It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. The NCB version of the Bible, Romans 8, 34. Who can say God's people are guilty? No one. Because Christ Jesus died, but he was also raised from the dead, and now he's on God's right side, appealing to God for us. I think that really makes breaks it down for us. Thank God for the fact that God is, Jesus is making an intercession on the right hand of the Father for us. This is why, again, as I said earlier, put yourselves aside and get closer and closer to the Lord. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. These verses, these verses that deal in the supernatural, our text is talking about God, Jesus in heaven, by the throne of God, making intercessions for us. When we look at John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John 11, 25 through 26. I am the resurrection and the life. No one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by, by me living in me no, never will never die. Do you believe this? John the 11th chapter, verse 25 and 26. Romans the 14th chapter, verse, excuse me, Revelation 14, 13. Then I heard 
a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So many of us are so caught up with what we're going to get in this earth. We're so caught up in the things that we're caught up in instead of being caught up in the fact that we need to be on the side of this verse in Revelations 14. Blessed are the dead who die from now on, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from your labors and were works that will follow them. That's the beautiful thing about when you follow the Lord. Follow him in Romans, the first chapter, verse 2, which he promised before those he prophets, the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, here it is, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, my brothers and my sisters. That's why, as I said earlier, we ought to be getting deeper and deeper into the Word of God, because when we get into these verses, that suggests supernaturalness. It's deep, it's profound, and it's supernatural. Keep on following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the power of His resurrection, in hallelujah, and in the power of His holiness, thank God I serve a supernatural God. Hallelujah. I'm happy today.